Hey, and welcome to this short tutorial on how to quickly and procedurally populate your scene with the help of forest tools. Let's get started. For the tool to work in your project, you need these PCG plugins to be enabled. Bion Core and Sample, Regular PCG, External Data and Geometry Script. I am also going to use the Alder Trees and Geodew Grass from Megascans. This is the scene we are going to work on. It's an Unreal Engine starter sample for ArchViz. First, let's delete the foliage actor that is already here with these stylized looking trees. Then I am going to go into the modeling tools and draw ourselves a spline to act as a mask for the area where I want the trees to grow. I'm going to rename the spline so that I know later on what is what in the same. It's a general tip to everyone to actually spend time to organize and name your assets accordingly. This saves a lot of time down the line. Now let's bring in the forest tool blueprint. From the dropdown, you can choose what type of object it's going to operate on. In this case, since this scene doesn't have any landscape, I'm choosing the Static Mesh option. Static Mesh by itself uses the ray hit and only spawns points on top of objects that have a collision. If by default it's not spawning anything within the bounds, your mesh probably doesn't have any collision. You can mitigate this by choosing the Use Poison Sampling for Mesh, which will pass the mesh and spawn points anywhere in the scene, regardless of the bounding box of the forest tool and collision. Be wary that this is pretty heavy option, especially if you need to generate thousands of meshes, such as grass, on very large meshes. So before picking the mesh I want this to operate on, I'm lowering the sampling to 0.02 to generate less points. Then I'm adding a new mesh into the scattered surfaces category and picking our ground mesh. Now that the points are generated, we can see that they are spawning everywhere, under the water, inside the house, and so on. You can use some filters to filter some points out, or use the spline that we created earlier as an include area. In the area category, locate the spline exclude array. Add a new position to it with a plus button. Choose a spline we drew earlier and check the include checkbox underneath. Then you can use Forest Manager Utility to quickly populate the Forest Tools objects with meshes and access different useful buttons for each Forest Tools object in your scene. I'm going to choose Alder Trees Field Variants and click the Assign Mesh button. Then press the Generate and it's done. Now in the Transform category, we can randomize their rotation and scaling to feel more natural. You can also multiply the scale by a map for more clustered look. We can also exclude the building so that our trees aren't intersecting it. Simply pick the building in the Exclude Mesh under the Area category and play around with the bounds to get the result you need.
I am going to draw a new spline for the grass. Since we're going to need a lot of grass, I am trying to contain the area to the area of the most interest in the scene, as I prefer not to wait around until they spawn. We are going to use the regular static mesh option as it does not pass through all the mesh but only contains itself to the bounding box area of the forest tools. You can tweak the size of the box by going into the box component and writing your preferred values. We are going to include only our grass spline this time. Since our trees have also collision in them, let's disable it as well by going into their ISM components and turning it off. As you can see, the more geometry we have, the more visible it is that our spline is not very accurate. You can tweak this by adjusting the spline exclude precision value. The lower the more precise it is, with a cost of a bit longer calculation. Thank you for watching and see you next time.